Okay, so good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, this seminar is a cyber awareness seminar, as we title it. My name is Ami Feiner from Provision ISR. For those of you who don't know me, together with me is a, a Gal from our marketing department and Michael Rotem from our cyber department. Um, as you all well known, first of all, regarding today's seminar, uh, how it's going to look. I'm going to say a few words about this uh, event today. Then later, to, uh, Michael will present to you a presentation about cyber in general and about the solution, of course. And uh, we're going to give you some time for some questions. And we're going to share with you also some very common questions and answers that we gathered along the last uh, six months of this cooperation that we know in integrators and consultants are asking and, and key customers are asking. And we want to share with you those questions. And we also prepared answers for you. And later, we're going to talk also a little bit about the coming eight months of this cooperation, how it's going to look, when products are going to be available, what other uh, tools we're going to provide for you. Again, we believe in knowledge sharing, as you know. And our goal today is to give you another tool, some more tools, and how to approach the market with this, as we call it in Provision ISR, this game changer solution that Provision ISR has brought to the market and to the table of Provision ISR. And all in all, we're talking about 50 minutes. Let's try to keep it in under this uh, 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 timetable, but you're more than welcome to stay later up with us and ask for more information or questions. Uh, so before we start, and before I hand it over to, Mika, to Michael, um, as you all know, we signed this agreement January 2022. We launched the cooperation of Checkpoint in IFSEC in May 2022. And since then, we were very busy in, in studying what the market has to say about this solution. And um, I'm proud to say that we definitely feel that this cooperation with Provision ISR and Checkpoint is a game changer to Provision ISR um, roadmap and, and the future in general. Um, and we feel it with every meeting that we have. I see South Africa is together with us to, today. We have a meeting tomorrow at uh, Joburg Airport, the biggest airport in South Africa, it presents a solution. The solution is very um, clear to understand what, once you have the right tools. This is what we're going to try to give you today. Another tool on how to present the solution. And before explaining the solution, to bring you into the world of cybersecurity in general. And, uh, and this is what Michael will try to do today. So at this point, I wanted to to give uh, Mikael the ability to share his screen and to share with you our presentation for today. Mikhail, take it from here. <laughs> you can see the presentation, Michael. You can see the presentation because it's on presentation mode for me. So, okay, now we can see. Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. I'll go through the presentation. As Ami said, my name is Michael. I'm in charge of business development, especially in the aspect of this uh, cyber solution. Uh, it's a bit, it can be a bit technical, it can be uh, in different levels of technolo technology. So if you have any questions, please write them in the chat or something and we can answer uh, at the end. Uh, there is a video in the middle. Hopefully it won't be too lagging. Uh, if so, I'll not, I won't speak and do the video simultaneously and then I'll give the explanations. So as a start, we want to emphasize that uh, CCTV cameras and the CCTV ecosystem today is part of the cyberspace. It is no longer a camera, an analog camera and a VCR machine that is somewhere under the counter. 
but today it's a uh, part of the, the cyber space. It's uh, the, the camera is a computer by itself and needs to be treated as such. Um, so we went over and we tried to do some research and to understand who is the adversary, who might be uh, attacking our CCTV system. Uh, and we divided the attackers to three groups. The first groups are the script kiddies, hackers or small kids. It's uh, people who won't be essentially targeting a specific organization, but the, the power is the numbers. Lots of kids with the little combination of spare time, curiosity and knowledge, and they are just harvesting and scanning the internet, searching for uh, places they can hack to. One of these places can be a camera or a, an organization that we provided or that was provided by CCTV equipment. You can see here a screenshot of a form, a hacking form, where this guy calls himself God, is just giving away 29 rows of IP, port, user, and pass. Using this information, anyone can hack and go into these one of these cameras. Now you don't know where the camera is located and what's behind the camera and what access you can gain to other uh, resources using this credentials that were just given away by this hacker who managed to reveal them uh, in his own way. The other group are cyber criminals. It's uh, more organized crime. Again, they won't be targeting a specific organization, but they are looking for organizations that have a large number of cameras. It can be a mall, a hospital, any place that uh, installs a large number of cameras would suit their needs. In a few seconds, I'll explain what they can do or how they can benefit from attacking such an organization. The third group of attackers are the nation state. I'm giving here an example which is relevant for Israel, but each country would have maybe uh, the adaptations for their own region with the nation states that are performing cyber activity or cyber attacks. In, in this regard, I, I'm mentioning the Chinese, and, and here we should say a few words about the NDAA. U.S. federal government has long uh, understood or targeted the threat from the Chinese government and therefore are banning few major Chinese manufacturers like Hikvision, Huawei, uh, and et cetera, from doing any kind of business with the federal government in the US. Uh, and this method or this, it's not a standard, but this method of operation is now uh, going further and wider to Europe and to Australia, also banning the use of specific Chinese governmental uh, companies in uh, the government sector. In Israel, we are also targeted by Iran, which is conducting a, a, essentially a cyber war with Israel, going back and forth. Just a few months ago, we had an attack where uh, a group of Iranian hackers managed to hack into the municipality uh, system, uh, triggering air raid sirens. Now, when that happens in a state where sometimes rockets do tend to fall out of the sky, then you understand that this is not a pleasant thing. All targeted or all was uh, facilitated by a cyber attack. The third group that I'm mentioning here are the Russians. The Russians, as you know, are conducting a full-scale war in Ukraine, but not only on the ground, but also a cyber war. This is a report by all the Western that you can see here, the logos, it's the Americans, the FBI, uh, CISA, you have here the Canadians, the uh, et cetera. You can see them all, New Zealand, um, UK. All the agencies, the security agencies are, they published this uh, joint report. It's a 26 page report outlining all the cyber uh, warfare or the cyber criminal activity in the web. And most of it is targeting Ukraine, but not only. Now, when we give this presentation, usually it's to a targeted uh, country. So here we give an example of something which would be more relevant for that specific country. I'm giving here an example of the biggest cyber attacks in history, uh, the 10 biggest cyber attacks. So you can put each and every one of you in your country, something which is relevant or that, is, that speaks to your local uh, community. Uh, 
and then just say a few words about it. Here you can see an example that just, just randomly chose one. It's the Colonial Pipeline Company ransomware attack. It's from last year. In this attack, one compromised password was leaked. They managed the hackers to get only one password. And through that password, they got access to organization and they managed to disable the largest petroleum pipe in the, U in the US for several days. The outcome is that there is no gas in the gas stations. And uh, eventually the outcome was the, the petroleum company paid $4.4 million in Bitcoin to the hackers just to they will lift the, the ransom and will release the control back to the company. So this could be an outcome of a cyber attack. This one was for a compromised password, but it could be easily done by a, a hacked CCTV uh, uh, or camera, I'll show an example. So now, once we identified the, uh, the adversaries who would want to attack us, now the question is why? Now, the, the usual SAS would be the video footage, but this is not the only reason. Sometimes you present this presentation to someone and he says, okay, but who would want to see me or, or my video? I have videos of my backyard of, of a hotel. Who would be interested in the videos? So the video is not the only reason for an attack. And I'll show you two other reasons. The first one is just as a gateway into the network. And there is a reason why a CCTV camera is a very good gateway into a network. I'll show an example in a minute. Or harnessing or using the organization's resources, the resources by the cameras in order to make money. This is done by... Uh, organized crime, as I mentioned earlier, and I'll show an example in a minute. So as a gateway into the organization, the attacker would take advantage of misconfiguration or the fact or a few other reasons that makes the camera very uh, lucrative, or very uh, vulnerable, uh, and a good way for an attacker to go into the organization's network. And again, in, as we go along, I'll explain exactly why CCTV camera is a, is a very weak link, but taking advantage of this um, misconfiguration or the fact that they can hack into a camera, they just hop into the organization's network. Now you will hear from people that they say, okay, we know that we have that problem. So we isolate the CCTV cameras in a virtual network, in a different network, which is isolated from the other resources or the organization's resources. Now, this is not always true. I mean, they think it's an uh, isolated network, but sometimes or most of the time, it won't be isolated for long. It could be a technician that needs to have uh, remote access. So he connects a dongle or, or uh, any other method to that virtual network that is not uh, isolated anymore because he needs to do some maintenance. Sometimes it's just negligence, misconfiguration. Um, in many organizations, we see that although we have two different networks, the CEO, the chief security officer, in every organization, it's a different person, but mostly there is at least someone that feels that he needs to have access to all the resources in the organization. And his computer has one interface going into the CCTV network and one interface going into the corporate network. And that way, an attacker can go through the CCTV into the corporate network. And I'll show you an example just now. This is a test case. It just shows the concept. It's not a real life scenario. It's not a real uh, life event, but it's a real life scenario. In this scenario, this uh, company, Verde Labs, they build um, something that simulates a hospital. The hospital has um, the IoT camera network. Here, they're using an access IP camera. Um, have the corp network, which is the mail server and everything that the hop needs for its administrative uh, routine operation. And the third network is an operational network that uses uh, OT devices to operate, for example, the air condition or the uh, lights. So you can hear, you can see the example of the all the networks and how they are connected. Now here, the attacker they used a CVE. A known weakness in the camera. Most of the times we see the problem of updating cameras. There is a weakness, there is a bug in the camera, and there is also a solution. But in order to close that uh, hole or, or to mend 
the problem, you need to update the camera. And cameras don't have, or most of them, don't have an automatic update uh, procedure. And even those who have an automatic update procedure, it needs to be manually started. It won't happen in your phone. It happens automatically. Here, you need to approve the, uh, to take down the camera, and approve the process, and that never happens, or it seldom happens. Attackers here are using the uh, CPE, the, the known exploit, and entering network. From the camera, they find their way into the Windows server. Here, again, using CVE, a known weakness in Windows system, they managed to get administrator uh, privileges on that Windows server, and from now on, they are inside the network. And from the system one, which is the Windows server, they are now moving their way laterally into the OT network, and you can see here, they managed to turn off the air condition. You can see the uh, ventilator, which is not turning anymore, and the lights are off. All through going through the uh, CVE, the weakness in this uh, access cam. The full scale attack, I won't burden you with many details, but this is how the full scale attack looks like because once they're inside the organization, now they can do whatever they want. So they also put crypto miners and ransomware and they do everything. This is just an example showing what can be done. This is what was done all through this gap, from this whole security hole in this camera. <laughs> the second reason for attack, as I said earlier, is uh, criminals or, or organized crime. What they do, they are using the cameras as bots. Each camera has its own CPU power, its own CPU, its own memory. And the advantage here that they are all identical. So if you manage to gain access to one camera, if you have an organization with 200 or 300 cameras, most of them will be the same model, the same camera, the same firmware. And if you have, if you manage to gain access into one, you can replicate the attack and go to other cameras. And, and in that way you have large computing power, um, made by small cameras. In this example, this is a Russian network, as you can see from June 16th. They had 320 something, I have the number, 325,000 bots, cameras that were all compromised by the Russian bot. And what they did, this organization, they was selling access on a daily basis. So if you wanna carry on an attack, a distributed denial of service attack, if I want to take a website down, I can harness those 325,000 cameras and point them all in the direction of that site that I want to take down. Now you have the site and it has 325 or whatever number you want, uh, cameras that are communicating with that website, this crashes the site, it won't be available. And, and this Russian organization, this Russian criminal organization were selling access on a daily basis. So if you want to conduct uh, DDoS attack against a website, you are just renting a uh, an army of bots on a daily basis, using them, taking the site down, and then when the day is over, the site goes back up and you are giving back access to that Russian organization. As you can see, they were um, flagged and uh, closed, seized by the FBI in June this year. We in Israel have the cyber uh, attack, a DDoS attack just recently on the Ministry of Health website, uh, and it was blocked across uh, overseas, so nobody could gain access to the Ministry of Health. Uh, okay. Gan, can you hear me? Hello, everyone. We apologize. Michael, you're here, right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Everyone. So something happened, but we're back. Maybe a DDoS attack. So this Italian guy, is, he has 
the, these two Higg vision cameras, he's sitting on his uh, firewall, and suddenly he sees that there is abnormal communication going from his network into China, into these, you can see the, the IP addresses and the UDP port. It's something which is uncommon and, and not standard. Uh, he takes down the log files from the firewall and he sends it to the American uh, government, to the Homeland Security, asking them to check it out. And something here is very strange for me. I have my uh, cameras and it, somehow they communicate without my knowledge to servers in China. Um, after they conduct their investigation, the Department of Homeland Security, th they issue this cert, this adversary, uh, advisory, indicating that these Hick vision cameras do have uh, embedded backdoor in them. It's not a bug, it's not a glitch, it's an embedded backdoor, uh, and there is the security uh, advisory telling users to pay attention that there is uh, a backdoor. So you would say, okay, that was 2017, something has changed. Well, this is something more uh, current from February 2022. Uh, same thing going over again. It's the VMS, the Higvision VMS. It's the most common VMS for Higvision. Also, the Americans are conducting a, an audit, a cybersecurity audit. And in the audit, they find out that the VMS is communicating with China or to China without the user's knowledge. So this continued to go on, still goes on. The third reason or, or the third uh, uh, motive for someone to attack an organization is to get the video footage itself. This is the usual suspect, and it could be done for the, the most uh, obvious reasons, okay, for uh, information gathering. If I plan uh, to uh, break into a factory or to break into somewhere, I would be very, would be very helpful for me to know how does it look like from the inside, where are the cameras, what do, uh, uh, what's recorded, what's not recorded. If I already broke in and now I need to tamper with the recording, I want to delete any evidence to the fact that I was inside that uh, organization, then this is another motivation to in front of or to get the video footage. Um, this is an example, this is a very interesting example. Hopefully the video won't be very lagging. So I'll give the explanation now and I won't speak during the video. This comes from a, a, from Iran. Hackers, they hacked into the jail. This is a, a, a jail, a very notorious jail in Iran where according to activists in Tehran, uh, prisoners there are being tortured. So they managed to hack into the system gaining access to video footage from inside the jail and then leaking them to the press in order to embarrass the Iranian government and show to show that actually there is torture or prisoners are, not, are mistreated in this facility. Um, the thing is that there is another camera not only taking videos from the prison itself, but from the control room. And what you can see here is the video footage from the control room in the time of the attack when the hackers are not only taking the videos out, but also uh, taking the video system down. So this is the video. And you can see this is the monitor and now the system is reproducing. And this is from hackers that will go stop, they will invade their ass until the last prisoner is released. And well, you can see all this will be back with that message. I call it the supervisors, nothing to do. They just film the screens. They notice the protocol of what to do in the of that hack. Here you will see the video itself that was leaked to the PC in Iran uh, for the pure reason of embarrassing the Iranian government and raising the resistance of people. Iran still in the, this is another attack, just very, the video that we just saw is a year old, it's from August last year. 
This is from September this year. Um, anonymous, the, the hacker or well, it's not an organization, but it's a group. After the death of Miss Masa Amini, in, uh, because she was not wearing her hijab properly, they decided to put the Iran on their scope and they obtained access to thousands of uh, cameras in Tehran. And um, you can see here the vulnerability they are using. This is CV from 2018, still vulnerable in 2022. Hackers are using that CV in order to gain access and entering the uh, municipality and many uh, cameras across this, the country. They published they had access to 5,000 cameras. So as I said earlier, IoT devices and especially uh, CCTV cameras are the weakest link. And what I'll just emphasize a few reasons why. This is from a research done by the a researcher in the uh, Israeli university here in Israel. Uh, you, we can send the research if you need it, but this is just a few um, points to emphasize or to highlight why a camera is so horrible. So first of all, they are, men they are mentioning that IoT manufacturers have no experience in cybersecurity. Historically, uh, manufacturers, for example, for cameras, they know how to manuf manufacture a camera, but they're not essentially a cybersecurity company. And they just, they were... Grad, they were uh, they moved into the cyber uh, to the cyber field just as a part of the evolution, but they they were not born as uh, a part of the cyberspace. The other reason it's most of the devices have low cost and no incentive to provide security updates over time. It's not your cell phone. It's not a computer that there is an ecosystem of updates. Here, the lifespan and and the manufacturer has problem sending more and more updates security wise there is no auto update mechanism since you cannot make a camera you nobody would take a camera down the update needs to take the camera down take it off grid for the update itself it cannot be done automatically because you don't know what you will be miss, missing uh, recording wise so this needs to be uh, done manually and now you can imagine your plants in the garden if you have an automated uh, watering system how do they look like and if you have a small plant like Ami's in the back, which he needs to water every day, it doesn't look so good because it needs to be done manually. So the automatic thing, uh, it, it's an issue. Another reason is the hardware limitations, preventing encryption and, and active defense. A computer or a phone, they have spare computing power. Um, when you manufacture an IoT device, you want to be very efficient. So they are, they are designed to have the exact computing power they need in order to perform the, the job that they need to do. If it's a camera, so it has the CPU is as strong enough and the memory is as big enough as what the camera needs. There is no additional space for cyber protection or for cyber program uh, to protect that IoT device. And the last reason is the deployment. Mostly IoT devices are deployed widely. They are not centralized in one location. You can have a camera here or a camera there. And the fact that they are not centralized in one location makes it very difficult to control the security, security-wise. I mean, someone could be connected through a five-generation cellular network and not through your network, your organization network. And that in that way, you don't have the defense of your network in the isolated uh, sites. Another thing that's worth mentioning is the fact that this is uh, very recent, but uh, as you can see today, the concept is that in cyber defense, the uh, people are the weakest link. So whatever needs to be done or can be done automatically would improve the cyber security or the cyber defense for the organization. Now, having all that in mind, when we see the threats and we see the, the, the fact that IoT devices are very vulnerable, we understand that we as an IoT manufacturer uh, needs to, need to find a different or a new solution. And this is the, the joint venture with uh, Checkpoint. And this is our solution to the problems that I just uh, laid out. So Provision has a very strong uh, cybersecurity department and we are exercising our uh, means or uh, ways of security, but as an IoT or as a CCTV manufacturer. 
not as a security or cybersecurity company. Yes. Checkpoint, I'll just in a few slides, I'll, if you don't know Checkpoint, because it's very, uh, a very popular, a very known company in Israel, but not necessarily worldwide. So I'll give you a few words about Checkpoint in a second. Uh, but there are, their specialty is cybersecurity. And we did this joint venture where we manufacture the camera, they manufacture the security, and together we have a strong and very powerful solution. So Checkpoint, it's an international company, basically originated in Israel, but uh, it's in, today located in the U.S., or most of it in the U.S. Uh, you can see the numbers on your screen. I won't read them all out loud, but it's uh, a very large and very uh, uh, known, a very, uh, very good reputation for a cybersecurity camera company by Forbes, number one cybersecurity vendor. And you can see the, the growth of the... the how big the company is, the numbers here are millions of dollars. So uh, started with three employees in 1993, and today in 221 with five, almost 6,000 uh, employees, uh, revenues of $2 billion and profits of uh, $1 billion. A very large company. These are some of the, the Checkpoint's uh, clients. They're protecting Bank of America, JP Morgan, uh, and you can see the rest of the logos here. I'm sure you can identify them all. So this is a few words about Checkpoint, uh, just so you can have the context of who are we dealing with. So how does the, the solution work? Basically, we have three levels of security. We start with the firmware security, where we secure the device uh, before we take it out to the field. We have threat prevention which secure the device when it's installed and working in the, in the site and cloud management to have a, a, a big picture of all uh, risks and events. So the first layer, first period, we design a new camera. We do it with our best practice. We are setting the security policy as we used to. We won't let the, the user set uh, weak passwords such as one through eight. And this is our responsibility as a manufacturer. We'll do all the things that we know for our best practice. And then we have, at the end of the, of the process, we have a prototype ready to be inspected. We take that prototype and we send it to Checkpoint. Checkpoint will take the prototype and will do a risk assessment. They will take, essentially, they will try to hack the camera. So they will take the camera, reverse engineer the code, and do whatever a hacker would try to do when he has the camera. But here they have full access and full documentation of the camera, so they have even uh, uh, better means for attack. They would search. I, I won't go through all the, the mechanisms, so we'll have time for questions. But basically, as you can see here, the list, this is some of the things that would be done there. They would check that there are no weak credentials. They would check, uh, for example, I, I spoke earlier about the Hikvision um, cameras that communicate with China. So here, they would check that there is no suspicious domains inside the code of the camera. They are not searching, they are not sniffing the communication, searching for the communication, but they are searching for the configuration. Did someone put in his IP address or his server address uh, inside the camera's code in order for the camera to communicate later with that server. So this is way stronger, uh, et cetera. So th there's a, a list of vulnerabilities and things that to be checked. And then at the end of the process, Provision would get back the camera, of course, and a report saying, okay, this is what we found in our risk assessment. Uh, you need pay attention in this and that model, in this and that section, you have uh, a known password, the password which is very strong, but it leaked a few days, a few years ago to the internet. So people know to try and use that password when they are trying to hack into cameras, please change that password, etc. We will do our uh, reconfiguration or, or we would mend anything that needs to be mended. And now we have a camera which was inspected by ch checkpoint and is ready to go to the field. Once installed inside the camera, we are adding a small piece of code. This piece of code by checkpoint is called a nano agent. 
and it would protect the camera during its routine operation. This agent is using or is implementing a few mechanisms, a few technical mechanisms, um, in order to prevent an attacker from installing malicious code on the camera. Again, I won't go over each and every mechanism. Some of them are very technical, but basically what the mechanisms are doing, they know to identify an hacker's behavior and, and, and hacking tool behavior. So if would someone would want, for example, if we'll do the analogy, if someone would want to enter this room, he has two ways. He can enter through the door or through the window, or maybe a third way would open a hole in the ceiling and come down. These are the only ways for someone to go into the room. Checkpoint are doing the same. They, are, they know if uh, uh, an attacker would like to or would want to install a piece of code, a piece of malicious code on the software, it would need, for example, to have a, a memory allocation. Code in order to run needs memory allocation. So their agent is monitoring the, mon the memory of the camera since they know what is a routine or how does the camera works when it's in the lab or when it's not being attacked, they can spot the differences and understand that now someone is trying to allocate memory. It's not us, so it might be an attack and they would stop the attack when it's happening. Checkpoint's motto is prevention and not intervention. So they all the mechanism works in, the, in that motto. They would identify the attempt, the attack attempt, and they would stop the attack before letting it happen. Um, there is, again, I won't go through, if you have any, if you need uh, more technical data, we can go over it later on, but basically these mechanisms would make sure that nobody can uh, install malicious code on the camera. And in that way, we have a checkpoint protection. We have it, it's, it's like metaphorically, we have the stamp and the logo saying that we are secured. This is an example of the MBR uh, screen. As you can see, there is a small checkpoint logo on the right uh, corner of the screen indicating that the system, the security system is active and running. And when you have that running, you are uh, uh, secured. Basically, you know that You have malware protection uh, on, so no malicious code could be installed on the camera and it was not added. Your data is secured. Nobody is now watching your videos or taking video out of the system. Uh, the flash functions as expected. Since we have a reference, we have the, the way the device works in the lab. So now we know that it works the same in the field. So it works and it functions as we expect it to function. And it's not you in order to infiltrate into your network or to take out data from your network. The third level of security is the centralized uh, risk assessment, the centralized logs. You will be able, this is, uh, we don't have it on the current version, but you will have it, we'll have it on the next version. Every event, every attack event is being logged in the system is the same as a, a video or a system event, as you can see here, you can filter them. So the same as you have a sensor alert, you have a checkpoint alert. And if you go into the alerts, then you have an indication of what attack was done. For example, here you have a zero day uh, protection was activated and the attack was prevented. It is all, all is on a, a need, uh, not a need to know, but for you, for your knowledge, it's all informative. The user doesn't need to do anything. It's fully automated. And the logs are just for your uh, uh, knowledge, not intervention. And if you go into the log and have more detail about the attack attempt, um, okay, zero day protection. This is, it was a shell injection uh, uh, attempt that was blocked by the system. And the third layer of the, the biggest picture, if you are a checkpoint customer, and you have other checkpoint solutions or devices, then you can have a centralized log to where all the logs from all your system would flow in. So the same way you get uh, logs from an attempt attack against your end uh, uh, users or against your cloud infrastructure, you will get the same logs into the centralized uh, panel 
for the CISO, for, for whoever is running security for the organization. And there you see cameras the same way you see the other pieces of equipment in the organization. That's it, basically. This is the... the um, uh, oh yeah, I have the screen back. Okay, so that was our presentation of, of the solution, the problem and the solution that we are offering through uh, the joint venture with Checkpoint. And we can go over the Q&A now if we have time. Yeah, just before that, first of all, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, we are sorry if the audio here and there was a bit uh, rocky, but I think you got the idea. What I want, uh, and again, this uh, seminar is not only about sharing the tool with you, but also explaining the tool itself. And uh, we will answer some questions in a minute. The concept of this presentation is very simple. You need to remember most of the people that you will meet are not aware of cybersecurity. They are CCTV people, whether they are integrators, whether they are security consultant or architecture as we call them, or even end user. Most of them understand the word, the word cybersecurity, but that doesn't understand the meaning of it. So what we did in this presentation, and this is very important to understand, the first part of this presentation, the entire concept, is to bring the person that you're sitting in front of to the world of what we call the cyberspace. This is why we explain to you who are the potential attackers, why they attack, and we gave you different examples. We suggest that always, and we've done this presentation in different countries already, and so what we suggest is every time you do this presentation, find a way to bring it closer to your market. Find relevant articles about cyber attacks on your country. <clears throat> Sorry. And the next part of the presentation is the solution itself, which you've seen before, how it works. And I hope that by now you know how to explain it a little bit from the interface, a little bit from the before we install the camera, a little bit from when we install the camera and all of that. So first of all, thank you for joining. We're gonna take the time now to answer some questions and I'm gonna share a presentation with you about q and I already wrote myself some question in between that some of you have asked and we will try, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, some of the questions that I, I got it here and someone, some people asked, send me some question. So we will share with you a presentation now about q and I will ask you a question and basically Michael will answer the question as we wrote it for you. So you have a much clearer understanding about how to prepare to such a meeting. So bear with me. Okay. So Michael, uh, with your permission, I'm gonna ask the question and then you can uh, give the answer. So one of the first questions that uh, we are being asked is, okay, I have a site with existing provision ISR cameras, or maybe a third party cameras. Can I use that new solution? Mike? Well, as for provision ISR, our basic security level, it was checked by checkpoint. Okay, so if you have our cameras installed, you have a, a good level of security. And uh, we were, we will be handing out also a security uh, guide or security checklist for anyone that's installing our cameras to go over uh, that list and making sure this is the list, making sure it's like uh, the to-do list. So what you need to do in order to have the highest level of security, even if you don't have the new camera or the camera could be a solution with the solution, you should go over through these steps, just making sure that you are using all the security measures we have already pre-installed in the cameras in order to have the, the highest level of security possible. If there is a third party installed, then of course you need to upgrade the firmware. Upgrading the firmware is, is the best uh, thing to do, the first thing to do. Uh, and then you can contact, of course, that manufacturer in order to get their security list or their security to do list. Uh, and if you want to upgrade or do it gradually, then at least in the first part, replace the NVRs. This is the, the centralized uh, junction 
that if you put the new provision checkpoint uh, hardware over there, then you'll have at least the highest level of security at the junction. And then you can address the new cameras or gradually change the cameras to the ones uh, within, with the solution. You cannot uh, uh, install the new or the checkpoint software, the new version on all cameras, as I said, because we need to upgrade the uh, power, the computing power of the camera in order for it to be able to do both tasks, to act as a camera and to have the security uh, nano age work. Okay, so just to make it very clear, just to make it very clear, um, the checkpoint product, the provision ISR checkpoint protected items are a freshly new hardware. We had to change our entire hardware. This is why in, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a roadmap of how it's going to look in the next eight months when we are going to have product in stock that you can have and start offering because this is our new hardware, much stronger hardware product. And this is one of the reasons you cannot implement that solution on older items. So to your next question, and we are being asked quite a lot of this, you are manufacturing in China. Provision ISR is many manufacturing in China. How do you, Provision ISR, control that the solution does not be manipulated itself? Sorry? Yeah, that's a question. So how do you control? Yeah. Go ahead. We get this question, especially from a governmental or security organization in Israel and across the world. Well, first of all, the, the production lines are provision ISRs that are owned and controlled by provision ISR employees. So this is your iPhone also is being manufactured in China, but nobody asks about the iPhone, where is it being manufactured? So the same for that. Second, Checkpoint puts the name on the product. Okay, so they're protecting uh, uh, their name and when they, they sign the product, they give us like warranty that the product is secured, that it was checked. Now the nano agent, basically if someone manipulated the, the, the line or, or the production line in China, it, it can be in one or two ways. The first way is before we even do the risk assessment. So we finish manufacturing, and then you try to put your malicious software or your backdoor uh, on the camera. So if it was done at that phase, now we are sending the camera to checkpoint. It will be discovered once they do the risk assessment. So this covers all the whole part from production until the risk assessment. Now. So you say, okay, when the camera comes back on the risk assessment, then we'll put on the, the British software. Now, in that case, the camera won't run. One of the procedures, one of the techniques that the camera has, it's a control flow uh, mechanism. And if you try to manipulate the flow of the software, it won't run. So anyway, you can't manipulate the camera, not before the risk assessment and not after the risk assessment. Okay. Um, another question that we are being asked, anything can be breached. What makes your solution different? Well, that's true, basically. Everything can be breached, but um, any IoT is hackable. But the question, first of all, who is trying to hack and how long would it take the hacker to hack? If it's a government, it's one thing. But together with Checkpoint, we are taking the level of defense a lot higher, okay? It's like turning, uh, if you lock your uh, your door, you can lock it, you can just slam it closed, you can lock it with one lock and you can put five locks. So we are putting the five or, or several locks on the door and this way, if someone wants to hack into your organization, it's still possible, but very, very, very difficult. Um. I saw other publication from different manufacturers uh, about cyber levels. What makes your different? Well, first of all, our solution is the only one that is real-time protection. We have a piece of software that runs on the, the camera and it's, it's monitoring the, the, the way the camera works. Other solutions, they do signature-based solutions or they do 
they split the communication and they look, they sniff the communication to the camera. And what they have is like, after the, the horses are already fled the stables, now they are closing the doors. Our mechanism is the only real-time mechanism. It was developed by a third part, uh, for a third party leading cyber expert. I mean, this is not a security solution made by an IoT manufacturer, but a solution made by a very uh, strong, very leading uh, cybersecurity company. And as I said earlier, it's not signature based. We are not searching for a known attack. Antivirus software, they know how a virus looks like. So they are looking for the virus, but they need to know how does it look like. Um, other cybersecurity uh, solutions, they know how does a specific attack look like and they're searching for a specific attack. We are different. We know how would any attack look and we are preventing the attack uh, um, behavior an attack behavior and not a specific attack itself, making us uh, not dependent on updates or on uh, any mechanism, because it's, uh, it's not a signature-based mechanism, but uh, a behavioral mechanism. Very well. Um, the security system is off. This is one of the most common uh, questions that we are being asked, and I, Michael also addressed it. My security system is off-grid. It's not even connected online. It, or it's separated from my other computer network. So I don't need this solution, am I I'm good? Well, there is a very short answer to that. You can add the word, you think. You think you're off-grid, or you think you have an off-grid uh, network, but you should take under as a work assumption that your network is would be connected at any given point, it might be connected to the internet. And when that happens, uh, you, you really don't want everything to be open because it might be, or you think it might be isolated and it might be difficult to get in, but once someone is in, if you don't put other security resources or other security measures, then you can do whatever you want once it's in. It could be, as I said earlier, a human mistake, uh, a summit for maintenance. It could be an updated Cayman network on a USB drive. Uh, there are many, many reasons, but even a virtual, private network is virtual or a virtual local area network or VLAN, it's virtual. It's not really isolated cables. And even more, when you have isolated cables, if someone sticks a dongle with a, a, a five generation cellular access, then it's now connected to the internet. So you would want even isolated networks to be fully secured. And for the internet in the beginning, but a connection of an other network could be done even not uh, by mistake, but with intention, even uh, as uh, espionage or it could be uh, anything. Okay. So my next question, according to what you showed me, and I like what you showed me, everything is breached. I have printers, I have controllers, I have other IoT devices. IoT devices. What's the point the of closing one hole in a bucket full of holes. First of all, as we mentioned, the, the cameras are your biggest holes. So close your biggest hole in the beginning, it will give you an activated level of security. The IT devices or the cameras, their purpose is designed to have extra access to them. Your, your printer or your uh, uh, refrigerator, which is connected to the internet, might be connected to the internet, they are not designed to have remote access uh, from, from a, a, a remote site into the network. This device by nature is calling for uh, remote access and that makes it uh, the thing that you wanna close first. So you put rails on the windows, at least on the first floor, taking under consideration that it will be difficult for the attacker to get to the second floor, but not securing your cameras is the same as leaving the window open on your first floor. Okay, and um, this is a question we also got here on the chat. What kind of alerts do I get for a cyber attack attempt? Will I get push notification to my VMS, to my mobile phone? Where? Oh, we showed the, I saw in the presentation, we showed the, the uh, log system and you get an event the same way as you get a video event. 
and then you can kind of video uh, pop up, push, and whatever, put the picture you want. And, and again, this is, uh, you don't need to do anything with, with the alert. You just need to know that someone tried to attack, but you don't need to do, you, you're not asked to have any decision making in the process of dealing with these alerts. Uh, third party integration is much more complicated. So we'll, this is for our next stage. Ami will uh, go over the roadmap. So this is from our next stage. Okay. Do other manufacturers have that solution? Well, again, this is a very short, uh, we can give the short version, no. Uh, we are, the, we are proud to be the first manufacturer with this kind of solution. We assume that the rest will follow. I mean, this is not something that uh, uh, will go unattended, uh, but we are the first. Uh, we understand the importance of the cybersecurity in the CCTV for all the reasons that we, we laid over, uh, and we're proud to be the first, uh, the leading company with this solution. Um, yeah, we spoke uh, again. Not any manufacturer can implement this uh, or, or would, would take this uh, device. If for the NDA, most probably the solution won't be for you. Um, and yes, Intel, which is uh, the, the chip manufacturer, they are the second company after provision to go to a checkpoint using the same mechanism or the same. Uh, concept of solution and implementing in their uh, risk and CPUs, the, the special, section, the special family of uh, uh, sellers, manufacturers, and they are now doing the same or, or implementing the same solution that we have with Checkpoint with their technology. Uh, do you have an outside certificate validating that it works? Well, yes, it was. Manufactured by Check, which is a third party, so it, we didn't get to a lab who would check checkpoint. So it was manufactured by a, a third comp, third party cyber security company. Uh, we learned that other breaches, recent breaches, CVEs, no CVEs for for other manufacturers would have been. If they had this solution, then they would not be uh, vulnerable to those CVEs. Although they have the CVE. This layer of security would prevent an attacker from exploiting that CVE and installing malicious software on the cameras. So uh, this is that. And again, Intel is the next one to which spoke about it to have the, this cooperation with Checkpoint implementing the same solution on their CPUs. And one of the most interesting questions we are getting asked, well, it looks great, but it's probably more expensive. No, I mean, it, it's going to be more expensive because as we we told you, we need to upgrade the firmware. We need to have a stronger uh, uh, CPU power. So basically, it costs, uh, uh, we need to pay for that. And as you can imagine, Checkpoint also, they are not volunteers. But having said that, we still, met, we are planning or our intention is to stay in the same price range and to be competitive as we've been until today to carry on and to stay in that specific area. And we're not going to fly with uh, uh, prices which are very, very expensive. Okay, at that point, there, there are a few more technical questions that we wrote here for you that uh, Checkpoint helped us uh, to answer as well. I don't want to go on each and every one of them, uh, but there is a few more Five more questions here that are more deep technical questions. Uh, for example, how are version update provided? Um, can the protection be turned off or on, uh, for example? Um, so all of those questions, you have the answers here. I will answer some of the questions that are being asked in the chat as well. And this is for Michael. Uh, so the first one is, uh, um, what happened if uh, if the new check, let's say I have a new NVR with Checkpoint Protect and I have old IP camera, a provision ISR. 
will all my network now be protected? Again? Sorry? So basically we are protecting the, the uh, equipment that was provided by us. We are not protecting the whole network. We are protecting the CCTV network. Of course, you need to no, no. Other Again, the question is, the NVR is on provision ISR, and NVR with checkpoint protect. The IP cameras are from provision ISR, but they are old hardware from three years ago. Does my cameras, is my cameras protected as well, or only my NVR? Your NVR is protected. The NVR, as I said in the first slide, of the first question is, the most critical uh, junction in the network. So you have very good level of security. Again, if someone uh, has access to a specific camera, then the camera itself is not protected. But uh, the network itself has very high level. It's not, I, I can't put it with percentage, but you have uh, uh, a very high level of security. So like I said, you have a list here of uh, Q&A that I'm pretty sure will help you to be prepared for any kind of meeting that you might have. And we're willing to give you more knowledge if you need. And again, we are willing to in, in get involved with any potential meeting that you might have that need to be presented this kind of solution. However, I'm pretty sure that if you play with that presentation, of course, you will get access to the material. The, the presentation will be sent to you together with today's recording. So you can refresh your memory and prepare to any kind of meeting. Let's go to our uh, final and uh, last uh, part of today, uh, which is the roadmap of the coming, let's say eight to nine months about checkpoint uh, products. So today we are at October 19th. This is our distributor part of training where we give you as much as information presentation that we think is very crucial for you and a great tool uh, to present the solution and a Q&A list. It will be sent to you as well. First of November, we're going to have samples ready for you. You can order cameras and NVR. We'll try to ship to every one of you samples that you can show to installers, to integrators, and to architectures in any kind of market segment. Middle of November, and as I told you before, in the last uh, four months, we've been very busy um exploring how to promote this solution in which kind of ways one of the things that we did for example was a, a cyber event a month in italy in our uh, in one of our offices we have office in israel and in italy as you may know so we did a cyber event a road show in italy this event was planned together with our local office together with checkpoint that joined the effort and came and gave lecture and in that specific event, we also did a cooperation with a local uh, cyber magazine in Italy. And this was a very uh, good and nice event. Um, sorry. That. Done. Um, so like I said, uh, ready for you. Uh, what we're going to do in November, middle of November, we're going to give you another webinar that we're gonna show and share with you how we did this event, how we plan it from A to Z. So it was a very successful event, more than 300 different uh, key people in the industry. We did it in the three main cities in Italy, Rome, Milan, and Bari, three different locations during the months of September. It was a great event with a great uh, turn, up, turn uh, of people and great opportunities that were open to us in the Italian market. We want to share the same uh, case study about this seminar with you, with the aim that during Q1 of 2023, we will host similar event in every country, in every one of your regions, wherever you are, together with us, together with Checkpoint. And uh, we want to show you how to do this kind of an event and how to budget it, how to plan it and so on. Also in the middle of the November, we're gonna start receiving our first stock uh, that you will be able to start ordering. By Q1 of 2023, like we said before, we need to change, we provision ISR had to redesign the entire product uh, range hardware wise. And basically every model is replacing by a new model. So we believe that in 
by the end of Q1, 50% of the models will be completely changed. By the end of Q2, 2023, 100% models of provision ISR, whether it's IP cameras, DVRs, NVRs, VMS servers, any IP device of provision ISR, PTZ camera, everything will be fully checkpoint protect, including a signature stamp of checkpoint logo physically on the product <clears throat> with new packaging that also explain the solution itself. We are making new packages to all the devices, all the cameras, all the NVRs, explaining about cybersecurity in a nutshell. And, and this is more or less how it's going to look in the next few months. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's it for today's seminar. We start, we try to stay under the barrier of 50 to 60 minutes. Apologize for the ones that uh, had to leave earlier. Thank you very much for joining. We're going to be here for the next 10, 20 minutes. If you have any more questions, for those of you that has to leave, thank you very much for joining. I want to remind you that we have the same seminar today in exactly four hours. So if you want to join again or invite any one of your colleagues, there is no hidden secrets here. So you're more than invited to invite anyone you wish. Uh, thank you very much for joining and see you in our next seminars. Like I said, we are here for the next uh, 10 to 20 minutes to answer any questions.